I want to talk about different resources by which we give. And I'm going to start by the biggest one. What is it? Uh, tithe. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tithe. Yeah, the T word. I'm going to teach you about tithing. If you have noticed, I don't beg anyone to give. I don't force anyone to give. Have you ever seen me say, oh, if you don't give, this will happen. Nothing will happen to you in Jesus' name. But if I teach you what the word of God says, out of your own heart, you will give to God. There is more blessing in that than me forcing you with sweet words to release to God. There's no blessing in being forced. It is more blessed to give willingly unto God. What is tithe? Tithe is 10% of whatever God has blessed you with. 10%. You take whatever God gave you, if it's $1, split it into 10. It becomes 10 cents. You give that 10 back to God. Amen. That is tithe. Whatever God has blessed you with, you take one-tenth of that, you give it back to God. Now, why do we give? We give our tithe to honor God and to support the work of God here on earth. Your money is not going to heaven. God blesses us so that in turn we can bless his work. In biblical time, the tithe belonged to the priests. And the priest will now take a tithe of the tithe and give it to the high priest. Why? The priests don't own any land. Go and read the scripture very well. When they were giving out lands to the children of Israel, they did not give anything to the priests. The priests don't own any land. The priests don't do any work. All they do is they stay in the house of God and they serve God 100% of their time. So, will the priests eat here? Will they just drink water and be satisfied? Do the priests don't have children that must feed? It is the tithe of the people that God uses to do what? To pay the priests. And to take care of the house of the Lord. So through tithes, the Lord met the needs of the priests. Now, in the New Testament, Jesus is our high priest. Jesus is our high priest. So when we give, it is to him that we are giving. The Bible says that the tithe is holy unto the Lord. You can find that in the book of Leviticus, chapter 27, from verse 30. Let's just read verse 30, because write down 30 to 32, but I'll just read verse 30. Leviticus 27 verse 30. The Bible says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is what? Is the Lord's. It is holy. It is holy. It is holy unto the Lord. So 100% of what God blesses you with is not yours. 10% of it is holy unto God. And whatever belongs to God must be given unto God. He said, ye are caused with a cause, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. In other words, when we hold on to what belongs to God, it's a curse. We already established that the tithe is holy unto God. When you hold on to what belongs to God, when you're supposed to release it to him, it becomes a curse. Verse 10 says, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Amen. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and it shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. What is 10 and 11 telling us? It's saying you are to bring what belongs to God to God. And as a result of bringing what belongs to God to God, 
God will open up a storehouse to bless you in return. Hallelujah. You know, this is the only scripture where God said, try me. There is nowhere else in this that God will say, try me. But here he's saying, try me and see what will happen. Try me. And he also said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. In other words, once you release the 10% that belongs to God, that is holy unto God, you release it to him, the remaining 90% becomes holy. And once it is holy, a devourer cannot touch it. Are you, are you hearing me? This is what the scripture is saying. It says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. In other words, the remaining 90% in your hand... The enemy can't touch it. Because, look, if we don't understand something, the enemy will keep us in a cage. Until we catch the revelation in the word of God, that is when we are set free. And when it comes to finances, tithing is right in the middle of it. You cannot avoid it. The devil will mess with your finances until you catch the revelation. Of releasing to God what belongs to God. Lift up your two hands unto heaven. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord make a way for you. May the Lord keep you safe at all times. May the Lord favor you in the name of Jesus Christ. In the morning, may you be favored. In the afternoon, may you be favored. In the evening, may you be favored. In the name of Jesus. The hands you have lifted unto God shall surely be blessed. Your hands shall never wither. Your hands shall never lack. God will always have something to bless you with. In the name of Jesus Christ. If he can put rivers in the desert, he can bless you. So, Father, please make a way for all these, your children, that are looking unto you. Make this week a week of blessing. Make it a week that is filled with your joy. Make it a week that is filled with your peace. Make it a week that is accident-free. Our going out and our coming in is under your divine protection right now. In the name of Jesus. I cover you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet in the precious blood of Jesus. And that blood will speak on your behalf in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Lord and my God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. God bless you. Have a wonderful week.